joined this morning by the Shadow Foreign Secretary Lisa Nandy. Good morning to you. What about the, this announcement that we've had this morning on the refugee numbers, the fact that we're going to be able to admit 20,000 Afghan refugees over the next five years? What do you make of this number and the timescales? Is it enough? Well, the truth is that we don't know whether it's going to be enough. The Prime Minister doesn't know whether it's going to be enough because we don't yet know the full scale of the refugee crisis that is unfolding. Um, I suspect that the announcement today, welcome as it is, has far more to do with the fact that the Prime Minister is going to have to face a lot of very angry MPs today in Parliament, not just on our benches, but on his own benches as well for the way that he's handled this over the last few weeks and the way in which the government has been missing and what we really want to hear from the Prime Minister when he comes to the Chamber in just a few hours time to outline the details of this scheme is some kind of seriousness about how he's going to implement it. There are mayors, there are local authority leaders who've already stepped forward and said that they're very keen to help and they want to work with the government. Not one of them as far as I know has had any contact from the government about how this is going to be implemented on the ground. I spoke to international partners last night the NGOs, the UN agencies um, and some of our allies, including the United States, about the conversations that have been had between the UK government and them about how we're going to form some kind of global agreement to deal with the refugee crisis. Those conversations haven't yet been had. We've heard this before from the Prime Minister. He said just a couple of years ago when he became Prime Minister that he would support and protect safe and legal routes, for example, for child refugees coming to the UK. And then one of the first things that he did was to break that promise and shut them down. So what I want to hear today is not just more press releases and hot air from the Prime Minister. We need a serious response to what is a serious situation and we need some detail about what he is actually going to do in order to alleviate the suffering of the Afghan people and make good on those promises um, that been, we made to them. You've been critical of the withdrawal. Um, a month or so ago on the radio, you, you had a, a different opinion. You said that... You supported the withdrawal. You said there was no real military solution in, in Afghanistan. You seem to have dramatically changed your, your, your position. Do you acknowledge that you personally have done a U-turn on the withdrawal from Afghanistan? I've made no pretense about the fact that the speed and the scale of the collapse has taken everybody by surprise. And yesterday I went with Keir Starmer, the leader of the Labour Party, to have a briefing from the national government's national security advisor to try to understand just how the government's intelligence, the UK government's and the US government's intelligence could have so underestimated the uh, advance of the Taliban and the relative strength and resilience of the Taliban and the relative strength and resilience of the Afghan forces. Lisa Nandy, I think let's the government genuinely that... believed that the, that the um, Afghan forces could hold yeah. out for yeah. far longer against the Taliban than they did. But well, I guess what I'm saying is you must have some empathy, if not sympathy, for Boris Johnson's position. Um, if a month ago you supported withdrawal and now you don't support it, you're, you're in the same boat as him, in effect. Let's have a quick look at what you said. I think this is on the 7th of July. There have been many people who've travelled over to Afghanistan over the last few years from Britain to keep people safe, to keep people alive, many of them my own constituents. But I, that, that time is coming to an end. It had outlived its usefulness. The, you know, there were real problems with British troops being targeted, but there were also problems with um, the, the Afghan people feeling that the time was long overdue for them to be able to determine their own affairs. So, so I guess my point there is, given that you were in the, your previous answer, you were critical of Boris Johnson and the intelligence that he's received, and you're asking what, what went wrong. What, why did you get it so wrong only on the 7th of July? Well, I haven't changed my position on the UK's decision about withdrawal. When the United States made a decision to withdraw from Afghanistan, it became virtually inevitable that the United Kingdom would follow suit. For the last few years, the role that we have been playing has been in relation to technical support, and intelligence support, as well as training the Afghan security forces and the Afghan police to try to build up their resilience. It was the Americans who were committing troops to support the Afghan military with air defence, apart from uh, alongside other measures, in order to try to support their fight against the Taliban. So when they decided to withdraw, it took, it plunged many NATO countries into chaos. A decision was made at Doha 18 months ago 
that that was going to take place. And then several months ago, the, U the United States set out a clear timetable for that withdrawal. So and I Joe have Biden not been failed, critical of Biden the UK government. The Afghan people? I have not been critical of the UK government for that, for that decision following the Americans to withdraw. Okay. What we are critical of is the fact that they had 18 months when they knew withdrawal was coming. They had several months when they knew exactly when withdrawal was coming. And it appears that visa applications okay. for... Afghans who supported us were not processed. It appears that the evacuation effort didn't get underway with British nationals. There's a, wow. a, a, an MP who contacted me yesterday to tell me about a British mother who is sheltering in a park with her young children. Yeah. It's heartbreaking. At the moment. It's heartbreaking. What, what about for, that for, point about President Biden? cannot be Biden. taken in because she is British mm. and Afghans fear reprisals. It is heartbreaking. She can't get any assistance yeah, from the what? Foreign Office. How is it that we are so unprepared for this scenario? That's what we've been critical of the government about. Yeah. And that's what we want mm. to hear okay, a plan you've made your point on that one. What about, we were asking about President Biden, his stance on all of this. He's, you know, obviously saying that it was a counter-terrorism mission, not a nation-building one. Um, you know, what, are you critical of the decision he took, the way he took, the way he's stood by his decision and the, and the way that he's let the Afghan people down? I think his statement in the last 48 hours that blamed the Afghan people for some of what has unfolded not was not the right d decision to make. I think yeah. you look at the situation that has unfolded in Afghanistan in the last few weeks, and whatever the rights and wrongs of the way in which withdrawal has been handled, whatever the rights and wrongs of the decision that the United States has made, you cannot look at this as anything no. other than a catastrophic failure. The Taliban are now back in control of the country after 20 years of hard work and sacrifice. By and is British it a catastrophic failure by, because I'm sure, as, as you know, Labour uh, Shadow Foreign Secretary, you must have contacts with the, with the Democrats over in America. Is, is this. You've used the words catastrophic failure there, and I'm sure most people you know, would recognise that. Is it a catastrophic failure personally by Joe Biden? I think there have been repeated mistakes over a very long period of time, and I have to say that, you know, this goes back 20 years with the, uh, the underestimation of how difficult it was going to be when we went into Afghanistan originally to degrade al-Qaeda to then put in place stable, inclusive, democratic arrangements so that the Afghan people could determine their own destiny. We spent 20 years trying to do that. And over the, the course choice, of that though, last 20 he? years, he governments of all political persuasions on both sides of the Atlantic have made mistakes, and I think we have to own up to that. But okay, just to say, President Biden you know, had a choice, didn't he, as to whether he saw through the deal that President Trump had already put in place. He could have, at that point, made a different decision. He, he could, and one of the things that he could, and I think certainly with hindsight, should have done is not to give a definite end date for all US support to the Afghan security forces because one of the things that that has clearly done is it has given a boost to the Taliban who knew that it was just a waiting game until they could advance and it seems to have had a serious impact on the morale of the Afghan forces as well. We need to understand why it is that the UK government that was working so closely with the Afghan forces didn't make that clear, or why our intelligence got it so badly wrong that we believed that they could hold out for longer than they could. But most of all, what we've got to do now is deal with the situation that is unfolding in front of our eyes. And, okay. you know, when I spoke to the Americans yesterday, one of the things that I asked them to do was to continue to provide support. We've got an evacuation effort ongoing at the moment, which is extremely fragile, which involves okay. many Britons and many Afghans. We've got a humanitarian crisis unfolding. We need the United States to be present and to be a okay, partner in helping to resolve those things. All right, Lisa Nandy, Shadow Foreign Secretary, thank you very much for joining us this morning.